Hi there, and welcome. Welcome, Math 30-1 learners. My name is Mark Lambert. I'm one of the instructors here at RTD Academy, perhaps your instructor. And welcome all, a welcome back to some of you if this is not your first course. And whether or not you're brand new, I can see that you are looking for some information on how to get around, how to access your lessons and assignments. And that is a great sign. I'm gonna take that as a great sign of your commitment, and even let's say your excitement towards finishing this course and getting those juicy Math 30-1 credits, with a good mark even. So in this short video, I'm gonna show you how to find your schedule in your course outline, uh, access those really great lessons that we've got waiting for you, uh, and complete the homework associated with each lesson and kind of check things out in the grade book. Your schedule. So schedule and course outline, you're gonna see a tab there right above your where, where the course content actually starts. If you click in there, well, first of all, your schedule will appear here once it is built. And we need to build your schedule with an in-person, in online, did I say in-person? I guess an online uh, meeting that you're gonna book uh, once you're finished going through all of the orientation materials. So once you've gone through and done everything in your comm course, you're familiar, you know your way around the course, your last step is gonna be to schedule an orientation where you meet your teacher and of course a custom schedule is built for you based on when you want to start and finish the course. In the meantime, you can check out a course outline here. So if you click on course outline, it's going to show how you're going to be evaluated, how the course is divided into three sections, and each section has two or three chapters or units associated, and then there's going to be an exam at the end. So you have three exams, that's going to be it for this course. Three larger-ish exams based on two or three units. As well, there's a sort of cumulative assignment that's at the end of each of the units or each chapter and all of those uh, assignments which of which there are eight of them are going to combine for 25 percent of your mark more information here about uh, your exams different things like that I'm just going to talk about this last one with student engagement this is an important one if you're an rtd academy active student to stay on as an rtd academy student you need to maintain a constant course presence. We need to see you logging in regularly, accessing lessons and doing homework regularly, doing your best to keep up with the schedule that you've built. If you fall behind, we expect you to kind of make contact with us about how things are going and if we can help you with a catch-up plan. If you find that you're gonna be away for any particular lo particularly long period of time, like say certainly any longer than a week, and you're not gonna be logging in, we're going to ask you to reach out and make contact with your instructor to explain. Don't want his students to go missing. Don't want to see a student that hasn't logged in for a couple weeks. Uh, that's you know, when, when problems can arise. Uh, that, that's when you become at risk of not being able to finish the course. And that's where you need, you're going to hear from us. And if you're not able to commit to making regular appearances and staying active in the course, your status as an ongoing student could be in jeopardy. So this is really important about student engagement. Now I'm gonna leave here, and next let's look at how the course is actually divided into those three sections. I'm gonna jump into chapter one, transformations, and you can see that there are five lessons with a cumulative assignment at the end. The edge interactives are different kinds of tools that you can play with, not necessarily part of the instruction though. So you can get started at 1.1, Intro and Translations. But before I go there, I'm gonna go up to the top and show you a couple of PDFs that you should be able to access. First off, there is a workbook. Okay, so a workbook for this unit. If I click on this, it's gonna contain all of the notes, activities, examples, worked examples, for each of the lessons. It's comprehensive. And some students prefer to have this to work off of. So if you maybe have a tablet that you can write on, or if you want to print it off or print off part of it, then you can participate in the activities and try these examples right here in the actual book. This is an option. You do not need to do this because all of the, everything that's in this workbook is going to be contained in the interactive lesson. I'm going to get to that right away. But it's 
there is an option and if you're interested in a physical copy of the workbook you can order one so that information is right here you can actually get a physical copy mailed to you of our edge math 30-1 edge workbook and then you can work on that to follow along on all the lessons again this is not required but this is just an option that is available to you so this is all explained to you over here now let's dive into lesson 1.1 and look at what that interactive lesson looks like so every lesson has two components here. There's the interactive lesson and then there's the homework questions. So I'm going to click on the interactive lesson for 1.1. There's an intro slide talking about some of the stuff that I'm talking about here. You can just, I'm clicking next and it's going to advance through. Now on the right you'll see an outline. You can jump around. You can just go in order. So I'm going to go to the first content slide which is warm-up quadratic function. We'll begin with warm-up exploration number one. That's my friend Dean. He narrates most of the slides on here walking you through what's going on step-by-step step, how to do any warm-up, how to do a class example and explaining any of those important math concepts. So how do you imagine doing this? Maybe you're going to be sitting with a piece of paper out and you're going to be sketching, hey, okay, here's the graph of y equals x squared. I'm going to fill out this table and I'm going to make a note, my own set of notes for this particular lesson. Or maybe you want to work again right off of here. So there's my first uh, warm up exploration right here the graph of y equals x squared. Now, students that are really fresh in Math 20 or are repeating and taking Math 30 1 for a second time, Special note for you, and really for all students, is that you can make your own choices, as you will, about how much time you spend in any of these warm-up activities. Okay, so this is meant for students that are maybe need a review of Math 20, can't really picture what the graph of y equals x squared. Maybe that's you, and you could spend a little bit more time on here. But here's a bit of a cheat note for all of you, and that is you've got all these warm-up activities, but when you see a blue slide over here, so that blue slide, and over here in the notes, there it is right there. So it's kind of like core concept. That's going to summarize everything up until that point. So all of the warm-ups kind of lead to this. And this is the main concept. This is right to the point right here with the blue concept slide. Now I could scrub along here and get to the end. And then that's going to be like all of the, everything that is up to that point. Now there's a couple more to follow, and this is really important, I tell you right now, that is domain and range, interval notation and domain and range. At this stage of your mathematics very important concept here so pay some attention there and over here how to get the domain and range because from the graph, concept of domain and range is and how to get the domain and range from a determining the domain equation. of a function given its equation these are really important ones so do spend some time and be familiar over there now once you've gone through that you're ready to try some class examples so if I click on class example 1.11 now this is actually a, an embedded video inside here so I have to press play up here Okay, so if I press play here, and then I could enlarge it. For class example 1.11, we'll be... I'm going to pause that there. And now what I'm picturing for my students is that you are going to try this question. You're going to try this class example. You've gone through, uh, you've seen you've seen this the concepts of domain and range explained. Okay, so you've gone through all of that. Now you're going to sit here and you're going to try, okay, I know, how, I know what set notation and interval notation is, and I'm going to write the domain uh, for and range for this first function given that graph in set and interval notation. So maybe I, again a separate paper or in the workbook or on something you printed off that you are participating in trying. So I'm really going to stop and encourage you here to avoid passive learning uh, or passive watching which isn't really learning. If you're just going to watch Dean, my friend Dean who's uh, narrating this slide, explain this to you. It's not going to be as memorable as it can be. So you pause it and you try it, and then you check. So Determining the domain and range of... And I can scrub along here, and I can see, okay, well that's how, the, that, that's the domain and range for the first couple, and I can see how I did, and this is where I'm actually learning. You're getting real-time feedback as you are trying these questions first. That is the key. Ultimately, when you finish a lesson, and there's another blue slide of main concept, when you, when you finish any lesson, you want to be able to do all of the class examples. So you can see there's five here, you know, finishing off with this one. 
you want you want to be able to make sure that you can get each of these now this is a different type as well uh, it says you just click next and it's not it's not narrated and it's just steps just showing you steps on how, how to do this all right once you're done all those you are ready to do the homework so I'm gonna leave here go back to the course and I'm gonna click on the homework questions press start and advance over here and here's question one so question one is asking us now what's the domain um, of this function in set notation now there's math tools here so what I want to say is that the x values are between negative 3 and 6 so I could type negative 3 now I'm going to use my keyboards like, like x is greater than so I'm going to open that up to the x I'm going to go greater than now to get the equal sign I just click x or I just type in uh, not x pardon me I type in equal sign so greater than or equal to and then I go x and then I'm going to put the same sign and then I'm going to hit the equal again and it types it out like that and then I could put 6 and then I could hit enter and lo and behold I got that one right and I could confirm that by clicking on the key so if I got it wrong I could try again and you have to try at least twice and then that key will appear so you have to try at least twice and then you can see what the actual answer is now I could do it in interval notation I can put my square bracket and I'm gonna say the domain is negative 3 to 6 and if you're new here that is the same thing so that's the same domain but written in a different way and then I just have to hit enter there and I get that feedback again if I get it wrong like say I go to do the range and I say something like y is um, greater than or equal to negative 1 but I leave it like that I'm gonna get it wrong and I could just go in and fix it okay so now if I go in and fix it or here I'll show you this if I enter it again anything I can now the key will appear and I can even fix it now okay so or I could click up here get a similar question and that's a bit of a misnomer here because it's gonna be the same question but if I click on that get a similar question it's just gonna reset everything so it's now I could just start from fresh and I could just do this again so there's no penalty in just taking your time and doing the question over again until you get it right and if you're ever stuck on anything you're not sure how to do a question you can click on this message instructor it's gonna take the question with you that you're working on I could see exactly what you were doing select your teacher's name if it's me you can select Mark Lambert and you can ask for help maybe you can give me a little bit more than that you can tell me what specifically about the question or which part you need but you know help me out to, to give you a hand and maybe I'll even make a video for this question or some something more interactive and I'll share it with you and then I can add it to the course we're, we're always adding on like that okay so I'm gonna leave here go back and let's look at let's look at uh, different types of questions okay so I'm gonna kind of advance through you could picture yourself doing this doesn't it look fun a uh, lot and here's something there's lots of examples and videos and stuff so if I click on this written example it's gonna be an example similar or identical to in this case it's identical to um, uh, this particular question so I click on written example again and that's gonna help me do this particular question lots of that there so I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna stop see over here at question 14 because you can do graphing on here so I'm gonna use my this is like a plotting tool it depends on what the question is later on it could be a graphing tool for some kind of curve or a line but anyways here I'm just plotting points so I could plot a couple points there and I could choose a point here and um, and then I could submit it I could see how I did and did not get it right now I want to point something out now because I could I could pick another one and then I could jump to the answer say use up the remaining tries I can see what the answer is and then I'm like okay I think I get it now that I see the answer and watch this I could click on get a similar question this time and notice the function is f of x plus 1 and the point is negative 2 negative 4 but when I get a similar question 
Now it's, well, it's actually the same here, but it's negative one four. So it's a different point. It's a different question. Sometimes this will change as well. So I get a different version of the question I could try it again. And I could try it over and over again. And I could submit it until I get it right. Got it wrong again, get a similar question. This time it's f of x plus two and a different point there. I could try it over again. This is a randomizable question. There are unlimited versions of it and you could try it again. And every time you, any student does this, uh, a question is going to be a, a slightly different version. Now, before I move on from that idea, there's one last thing I want to show you and that is how to tell which questions are randomizable. Like which questions will give you a different version. This is programmed in here. And I just want you to just kind of notice that, that this is a programmed in question that's going to look a little different. Same with this one, programmed in. I'm going to get different versions for all of these. But if I go back to those first few, notice that this is an image. That's not programmed in, programmed in. So if I just get a, I could get a similar question, but it's going to be the same question. So I, it will just reset it. So you're, you're just pointing out that there's different types of questions in here. These first few questions are a sort of screenshot taken right out of our Edge workbook. And if you order the Edge workbook, you'd find those in there. But th that's where these come from. And that's why you're not going to get a unique version. About half of them. Okay, about half the questions are from the workbook. And about half are like this, where you will get a randomized different version every time you do it. And I hope that makes sense. Because the last thing I want to look at is just your gradebook. So I'm going to click on my gradebook here for this student version of me that actually got some marks on that first assignment. So that's I'm on, I'm on my way. And it's going to get auto graded as I go. All the homework marks are going to fill out. when I Later when I do the assignments where I'm actually counting for marks there, that's going to fill out on here. For the most part auto graded, but there are some questions that I, uh, teacher me, will need to go in and, and grade. So there are some written response questions and there's full explanations on how to do that, how to take pictures of and, and put your work and submit your work. Keep in mind again that your homework doesn't count towards your grade. It gets graded, but it's weighted at zero. Your assignments are weighted at 22%, and each of your three exams are 26%. And that, that builds to your overall grade of 100. So three exams and eight assignments, one at the end of each unit to get to your final mark. So that's it for accessing your lessons and doing your homework for Math 30-1. Uh, thanks. I'm glad you made it this far. And since you did, if you are doing the COM course online, you need a, com a code. Uh, and that code is done. D-O-N-E. So congratulations. You are done going through the first video and learning your way to navigate our course. And you've got your first answer for your COM course and to move on with that. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.